good morning students the topic that we are going to do today is the judicial reforms by william bentick now we have already done the judicial reforms by warren hasting the governor general the first governor general of bengal we have also done the uh, judicial reforms by lord cornwallis now this is the third judicial reform that we have to do that is the judicial reforms by william bentick now first of all you should keep in mind that there are certain changes you can find it it a little confusing to keep a tap on all the changes that are taking place what are the reforms that are being invented and what are the changes that are being taken place by each and every governor general but see you have to carefully understand the judicial system or the reform that has been taken uh, taken place by all these governor generals in order to understand that what has been the situation at that time of india and what are the reforms that were suggested by them so initially if you can see there was invention of uh, diwani adalat there was invention of supreme court also but later high courts were invented later so this was the time william bentick was is the time basically in 1820 so when i started about warren hasting warren hasting is the time from 1773 74 1774 to 18 23 whatever reforms have been taken place have been divided into three parts judicial reform by warren hasting judicial reform by lord cornwallis and judicial reforms by uh, william bentick so whatever acts you read from 1773 to 1829 the uh, william bentick period 1823 these are the time in which you should know what are things been invented supreme court is invented sadar adalats were there provincial courts were there provincial court of appeals were there munsif court were there there were circuit courts which are there but which are later abolished so these names of these courts you should know which courts are being made in which era which time and then which it is replaced by which other court which is being made so all these things you should keep a tap of now i'm starting with the judicial reforms of william bentick this is the third reform that you people should know it is the reforms that is been done after the warren hasting reforms and lord cornwallis reforms this is comparatively a very short topic like i have covered this in majorly there are eight reforms that you people should know 1 2 3 4 Five, six, seven, and eight. Eight reforms that I have mentioned. These are the eight reforms that you should know. That that is what is the work of William Bentick in the uh, in suggesting the judicial now reforms. Now William Bentick is basically the he is known as the first Governor General of India. If you people know. Then in eighteen, uh, he became the first Governor General of India. uh this was the time basically when he became the governor general of india he is basically known for his liberal ideas now he is the governor general why why this topic is very short the reason is that he has not just work in field of judicial reforms he has suggested various administrative reforms also he has suggested various economic reforms also he has suggested education reforms also he has suggested a uh, various uh, police reforms also he has suggested lot of postal reforms also so he has done and in fact social reforms like abolition of sati is one of the major achievement of this governor general so he has not just mentioned about the judicial reforms he has not just worked in judicial reforms he has worked under various he has suggested a various reforms and he is also known as the governor general who has a lot of a simple you sympathize and who used a lot of liberal ideas in his day to day functions so he is a very liberal governor general or you can say he is he is an astro aristocrat who sympathized with many of the liberal ideas of his day he made various important administrative reforms in indian government and society and he was the first governor general who opened up judicial post to indian so he invented even in judicial reforms one of the things that have been suggested by, that was suggested by him was to open up the judicial ref, uh, post also to the indians so he that, therefore all these things suggest that he has been a very liberal governor general so therefore you should know that this topic is a little comparatively and this can can only be asked as a 10 mark question or as a short note only or it can be combined as a very big question which com combines all the three judicial reforms so it can come at, uh, as a question that what are the judicial reforms that has been initiated by the initial governor general so in that you have to mention about all the governor generals if this comes as a question then it will just come as a question that it describe the work or what were the judicial reforms that were invented by william bentick when he in his uh, tenure of governor uh, uh, govern govern as a governor general so only this much you have to 
to write. Therefore, this topic is comparatively a shorter topic. Now, I'll start with this topic. I have already introduced that he was the first Governor General of British India, and he is known for his liberal ideas and he opened up judicial posts to Indians. So judicial posts were also given to Indians. Now one thing I want to mention to you people is that his time frame is basically from 1929 and he ruled I, I guess till 1930, uh, sorry 1829 to 1835. So if you people know I'll be telling you one more one more act that was introduced that was the, uh, the act of 1833. Now when act of 1833 was made the position of governor general of bengal i told you warren hastings was the first governor general of bengal that position was nullified that position was removed and instead of governor general of bengal the new position will be termed as governor general of india british india so William Bentek became the first Governor General of British India. So that same post which was earlier given to the Governor General of Bengal, which was known as Governor General of Bengal, was now introduced. The name has been changed and now he will be known as the Governor General of British India. And the first Governor General of British India was Lord William Bentek. He was known for his liberal ideas and one of the ma ma major reform in judicial administration, what he has done is he has opened up judicial posts also for the Indians. Now he has played a very important role with regard to judicial reforms in India and he was assisted in his judicial reforms in India. He was assisted by Bentick Butterworth, Bailey and Holt Mackenzie. So he was assist assisted by these three people in judicial while uh, making or while changing uh, the judicial reforms while introducing judicial reforms in India. So when you're introducing this topic, you can mention that he was the first governor general. He is known for his liberal ideas. He was the one who has opened up judicial post to Indians. He has suggested a lot of judicial reforms in India. And in suggesting all these judicial reforms in India, he was assisted by three important people, Pentec Butterworth, Bailey and Holt Mackenzie. Next, I have written the judicial reforms. There are eight judicial reforms that were introduced by him. Now there's certain changes that he has done there were certain things which were already there he has changed uh, certain things now first thing was that he has abolished the provincial courts of appeal and circuit courts now if i've told you about the uh, reforms that were introduced by Lord Cornwallis, I've mentioned there were provincial court of appeals also. The provincial court of appeals majorly were the court of they were they used to function in the four major provinces. I have mentioned about Dhaka, Calcutta, Murshidabad, and Patna. At all these places, there were in these four places there were provincial court of appeals for uh, the civil cases and for the criminal cases there were circuit courts which were the moving courts. I have told when we were dealing about uh, the judicial reforms of uh, Lord Cornwallis, these two courts were abolished under the William, uh, the reforms which were invented by William Bentec. So in 1829, Will William Bentec abolished the Provincial Court of Appeal and Circuit Courts, which were introduced by uh, Lord Cornwallis during his, his governmentship. And these courts were not functioning properly and their work was in er er errors. Uh, these judges did not acquire sufficient knowledge and acquaintance with the people of the country. So their work was not functioning properly and they, they do not have sufficient knowledge and because of that, the, these provincial courts of appeal and circuit courts were abolished under William Bentick. Second, he established Sadar Adalats at Allahabad. Now if you people know Sadar Adalats, both Sadar Diwani Adalat and Sadar Nizamat Adalat who used to be presided by the Governor General and his council. I told you that the Sadar Adalats were presided the Southern Nizamat Adalat was earlier presided by the Nizam, but when he was removed from his position, it was presided by the Governor General and his Council. So Southern Diwani Adalat also and Southern Nizamat Adalat also both were presided by Governor General and his Council, but they were both situated in Calcutta because the seat of the Governor General, Bengal was initially the capital of British India. So the Governor General used to reside in Calcutta and both the Sadar Adalats were in Calcutta. Now if somebody wanted to make his appeal to the Sadar Adalat and, and if the person resides in suppose Meerut or the person suppose resides in Panaras, then he had to travel all the way to Calcutta to file this appeal. Now, in order to reduce all these problems, 
William Mente established Sadar Adalat at Allahabad. So Allahabad will be comparatively nearer to Banas, Banaras, Meerut, Muzaffar Nagar and Bulanshar because basically Allahabad is there in UP. So the, for the people who reside in United Province, that will, this will be a quite a convenient place to file their appeals. So I have mentioned that so far there was only one Sadar Adalat at Calcutta and people had to travel long distances to seek justice. And therefore, in many cases, people, instead of going to the Adalat, they prefer to suffer injustice so they thought it's better to suffer injustice than to travel long distance and than to actually go to Calcutta so in, therefore by the regulation 6 of 1831 William Bentek made that demand and established a Sadar Adalat at Allahabad and Sadar Adalat what it will do the constitutional powers of the Adalat were the same as that of Calcutta so Calcutta this the Sudar Adalat, which are there in Calcutta, used to have both civil and criminal jurisdiction. Similarly, this Sadar Adalat will also have civil and criminal jurisdiction. The territorial jurisdiction of the new Adalat extended to Banaras, Meerut, Muzaffar Nagar, and Bulanshair. So, the areas that this Adalat will cover will be four. The people from Banaras, Meerut, Muzaffar Nagar, and Bulanshair can come and appeal in the Sadar Adalat, which are situated at Allahabad. So, the new Adalat, the Sadar Adalat, which is earlier there only in Calcutta, one of the Adalat, that same body was also constituted at Allahabad so that the people who belong to these four places can conveniently get justice. Next is the division of Bengal into 20 divisions and appointment of the commissioner as the head of each division. Now earlier I told you there was a there was a collector who was made and in charge of a district. But what William, William Bentick did, he divided Bengal into 20 divisions. So he divided the entire Bengal into 20 divisions and the head of each division head of each division mind you will be a commissioner so he divided he gave the responsibility of each division to a commissioner the bengal presidency was divided into 20 divisions and a commissioner was appointed for each division the commissioners were required to perform the same duties which formerly were performed by the judges of the provincial court of appeal and circuit courts now these provincial court of appeal and the circuit court judges used to deal with civil and criminal cases as i've told you so for civil cases there was a provincial court of appeal and for criminal court cases at the lower level there was circuit courts this work will also be done by the commissioner so commissioner will be dealing with both civil and criminal cases and they were also given duty of supervising the collectors of revenue and the police within their area so commissioners was made as a very important office because they were given the power to deliver justice both in civil and criminal cases these matters were earlier taken by provincial court of appeal and circuit courts Moreover, they were also given the duty of supervising the collectors of revenue and the police within their areas. However, these commissioners were themselves placed under the control of Sadar Nizamat Adalat and Board of Revenue for the criminal and revenue functions respectively. So whenever they are giving any judgment regarding uh, the criminal justice or whenever they are resolving or solving any criminal uh, case, then the person who is there in that case can file an appeal in the Sadar Nizamat Adalat. So these commissioners were placed under the control of Sadar Nizamat Adalat whenever criminal justice system is taken into consideration but whenever revenue related matters are there these commissioners were placed under the control of board of revenue so basically this commissioner office was under dual control Sadar Nizamat Adalat also used to control it and board of revenue also used to control it so I'm again, again explaining this point to you people that Bengal itself was divided into 20 divisions and each division was headed by a commissioner this commissioner used to perform the same function which was initially provided by the provincial court of appeal and circuit councils and they were also given the duty to supervise the collectors of revenue the people who used to collect the revenue and the police within these areas but these commission commissioners were themselves placed under the control of Sadar Nizamat Adalat while dealing with the criminal cases and the board of revenue while dealing with the uh, revenue matter so they were at themselves under the control of Sadar Nizamat Adalat and board of revenue this is the end of the third point. 
fourth is appointment of indian to judicial post now he was the person who also understood the need of indians to be appointed in the judicial post and he passed a regulation in 1831 that provided that responsible citizens were to be appointed in the zilla courts and city courts so zilla court and city courts were made and responsible indians who holded degrees who understood law were appointed in the zilla courts and city courts and lord william bentinck made such arrangement that indian judges could try cases up to value of rupees 300 so keep civil cases they can obviously uh, try or they can be judges in civil court civil uh, zilla court and civil city court where they can try cases they can deal with the cases with which are up to the value of rupees 300 and these people were known as munsif so that judge who will be appointed in the zilla court and city court will be known as an indian person will be known as a munsif and they got fixed salaries from the government and it also provided this 1831 regulation also provided there a principal sadar amin will be appointed by the governor general in council and he was decided that he will be responsible citizen will be held holding these offices they were to get regular salaries appeals from their decision would be taken to the zilla or city court so what will be happen sadar amins will also be appointed now sadar amins will be appointed by the governor general and his council and he will also be a responsible citizens will be holding this office and appeals from this sadar amins can be made to the zilla or city court but neither the amins or the munsif these indian officers were empowered to try cases in which the american and european british subjects were involved so basically indians were allowed or indians were appointed for judicial post they were given the post of munsifs and amins and they used to try cases up to rupees 300 munsifs used to used to be appointed in the zilla court whereas the sadar amins were appointed by the governor general and his council uh, but both of them neither the amins nor the munsifs were important empowered to try cases against the americans or the europeans or the british subjects so basically they can try only the cases where indians are involved wherever europeans americans or british are involved they cannot try the cases next is a regulation of 1832 was introduced introduced the jury system in bengal now what is a jury system jury system basically involves what is a jury a jury consists of common citizens of the country common citizens where these citizens are trained in their own subjects for example some some can be lawyer some can be social activist some can be a good learned person in political science or in sociology a person who is a activist these people form a jury and what happens this the object of this jury system was to help the european judges to take advantage of the assistance of respectable indians for the disposal of cases this Bit, uh, before them so whenever cases has to was come was come uh, to the european judges like uh, whenever a person used to approach the european judges whenever a cases is to be heard by a european judge there will be there there will be a jury system to assist him jury system means common sit indian citizens will be able to uh, will be there in the jury to assist that european judge while disposing the cases so whenever he has to dispose the cases he can take the assistance of the jury the jury can advise the european judge that this matter can be dealt like this and this matter cannot be dealt like this so the advice advisory position is provided by the jury the jury will advise this european judge to take or dispose the cases which come before them so this is one of the important provision that has been made by the regulation of 1832 and this has been introduced by william bentinck that there will be a jury jury system a jury which will consist of respectable indians indians will be a part of this jury and their work will be to advise the european judges while disposing the cases before them another point was that european judges were given the power to refer a case to a panchayat of the indians and the latter was to make inquiries regarding the matter in question and send a report to the judge provision was made for the indian assessors to help the judges they were required to give their opinions individually now what is that european judges were given the power to refer a case to a panchayat of citizens now whenever there is a confusion for example there are, there is a case where they requires the assistance of a panchayat panchayat people know panchayat uh, basically consist of uh, the panch the sarpanch along with him the five people to assist him so basically panchayat in a village area 
you people know at the ground level in village areas most of the cases are solved by panchayat only most of the petty cases are solved by panchayat only so european judges were given the power to refer any case to the panchayat of the indians and the latter latter means the panchayat was to make inquiries regarding the matter so all the inquiry work will be done by this panchayat and it will send the report to the judge so what can happen for example there is a case where where the problem is with where the problem has arise in a village area only and if it comes to a european judge what european judge can do european judge can empower the panchayat of that place only to make the inquiries now whenever the panchayat will be making their inquiries obviously that panchayat will belong to that village only it will be able to deal with the people and to set up an inquiry and the report that will be prepared by this inquiry will be sent to this european judge and the provision was made so that indian assessors will help these judges so the judges will get help from the indian people and these panchayat people will be required to give their opinion individually like what is the case that they have dealt what were the inquiries that have been set by them what are the questions that has been put in uh, in front of the people who are involved in the case and what was the report that has been sent so in order to involve more indians to assist the european judge this is one of the provision that has been given to the european judge they were they were empowered to refer any case to the panchayat so that they let the latter that means the panchayat can make inquiries regarding this next is william bentek has also abolished the use of persian as code language and ordered the use of vernacular language now earlier what the people used to face the problem the problem was that most of the people in the local courts mainly if i talk about they had no clue about persian so persian had been the language which was used in india during the mughal era persian you people know iran in iran the persian is the language that has been used and after the in the mughal era as also persian was used as the language of the court but later what happened when english came the a lot of effort has been made by other governor general also but william bentek in particular abolished the use of persian and introduced and ordered the use of vernacular vernacular language means for example the court belongs to bengal so bengali can be used as a language of the court now this change which was brought about by bentek was a great boon to litigants who could express their grievances in their own language so earlier they used to appoint a lawyer who used to understand her and used to speak persian language because the language proceeding used to take in was used to take in persian language only but now the people the litigants can easily apply can easily appeal before the court in their own language so he was the one who used who ordered the use of vernacular language they can the people can use their own language and last is that that during william bentek a, a rule only i told you when i was dealing with law commissions with you people when i was understanding making you understand the topic on law commissions i told you that the law commissions came in 1833 only lord macaulay was added as a law commissioner uh, whenever when i told you there was x plus 3 plus 1 this was the position position that was made so x plus 3 was the governor general executive council plus one member was added more and that law member will be a law member lord macaulay was made as a law member and during this time only 1833 only law commissions were set up by macaulay to codify the indian laws and you people know after that the indian uh, the indian penal court civil procedure court criminal procedure code all were prepared after this only so during his time only during william bentek time only the law commissions were set up and after that our codification process which you people read as indian penal code criminal procedure code all these codes were set up during his time only so lot of efforts has been put by, by william bentek he is known as a liberal reformer also he has given lot of provided lot of reforms in indian system administration judiciary police education everywhere has he has made a lot of contribution but when it comes to judicial reforms you can mainly concentrate on all these points i'll just repeat it again first of all he was the one who abolished the provincial court of appeals and circuit courts he established sadar adalat at allahabad so that people can have Have easier access the people who reside in the United Province, mainly in the regions of Banaras, Meerut, Muzaffar Nagar, and Bulandshahr, can easily access and go to Allahabad to solve their cases, to appeal to the Sardar Alat. Bengal was divided into twenty divisions, and a more responsibility was given to the commissioner who will be he heading all these divisions. And the commissioner was himself placed under the control of Sardar Nizam Ahmed Alat and Board of Revenue. 
the appointment of Indians to judicial post was made more. That means Indians were appointed as important munsifs or amis. They were given judicial post. And this, this was made so that Indian can also hold offices, can also enjoy these posts. But they were not empowered to try cases in which American, Europeans or British subjects were involved. Next to that, a regulation was uh, introduced in which jury system was introduced in Bengal. This was mainly done so that the Indians can also help and advise the European judges to dispose the cases which come before them. Next is European judges were given the power to refer any case to the panchayat. This panchayat will set the inquiry and send the report to the judge and they'll provide basically assistance to the judge to solve this matter. Next is William Bentick abolished the use of Persian in the court and he ordered the use of vernacular language that means people can use their own language, speak their own languages in the court. This was a great boon to the litigants who could express their grievances in their own language. And last is that during William Bentick time only law commissions were set up and under Lord Macaulay to codify the Indian laws. The Indian law which you people know today, IPC, CRPC started, but started drafting, being drafted during this time only. So this is the end of my lecture. It's a very small lecture and it's a very important reform that has been suggested by William Bentick. So we have covered all the three Governor General reforms, namely Warren Hastings, Lord Cornwallis and now William Bentick. This is a very important question that co can come in your exam. So do prepare it. Thank you so much. In case of any queries, you can mail me. My mail address is, I'm again repeating it to you people, it is fati.saxena at the rate alc.edu.in. Thank you.